Andrea, Tim, thanks for coming today. Um, I asked you guys to come over. I wanted to talk about SaaS security because both of you are spending a lot of time focused on that. Um, and we know it's a complex issue, especially for security organizations and compliance teams at all of our, our customers and clients. But what I did want to focus a little bit on is Salesforce because it is such a pervasive solution out there. And you know we spend a lot of time working on that collectively with our customers and clients. So Andrea, maybe I'll turn to you first. Maybe talk a little bit about what you see as our Salesforce security leader in that space and what's happening in the market. So thank you, Bob. Before we jump into security, let's add some clarification one second about uh, Salesforce as a whole, right? Because Salesforce is, is an application or a group of application, but it's also an ecosystem, right? So if you just look at Salesforce, it was created as a CRM, but then evolved significantly, adding multiple pieces, multiple products. If you think about uh, how Salesforce is used today, it's used, as I said, as a CRM, but also to run the majority of the contact to cash process. Sometimes it's used also for billing. There are uh, e-commerce products like with the B2C and B2C uh, space, but it's also used for um, you know, unstructured communication with, uh, with Slack. If, for example. So if you see just Salesforce, there are a lot of use cases, a lot of things that, uh, you know, create different challenges from a, from a security perspective. But then, as I said, it's an ecosystem. It's not just an application or a SaaS solution. The, if you look at the ecosystem, we're talking about thousands of applications that have been built on top of the Salesforce platform. So again, the usability uh, of uh, and the use cases that you can see in the Salesforce ecosystem are very, very diverse. And definitely there are thousands of them. Now, when we approach uh, uh, security, of course, this large ecosystem uh, creates a very large surface that can be misused by potential uh, malicious users. And you know, there are several things that can be done and should be done by companies uh, internally. First of all, uh, you know, there is the um, object and field level of security, the definition of the right profile, the right permission set, meaning granting the right level of permissions to the right users is absolutely critical for them. And then is using all the other tools that are, that are around there in the Salesforce uh, ecosystem uh, as well. So if you think about Salesforce products like uh, uh, Shield or uh, Security Center, etc., those one are great tools. And I have to say that Salesforce put a lot, on eff a lot of effort in uh, making sure that uh, companies are well equipped to address this problem uh, within the organization. But, uh, but they present limitations as any other tool, meaning a tool is extremely powerful only if used properly. We see a lot of cases in, in the market where companies, for example, just turn on Shield, but they don't do monitoring on the right threats or they, uh, they enable the encryption, but they don't encrypt all the sensitive fields they should, they're supposed to encrypt. So again, there are a lot of uh, products and tools that uh, only if used properly can really uh, help companies addressing the, the problem. And then there is the, uh, the uh, ongoing governance aspect, right? Security is not, is not just uh, um, setting the configurations in the right way uh, one time right before go live, but requires processes and the right level of governance to make sure that uh, that security is maintained ongoing on an ongoing yeah. basis. Now you hit on a, a couple of great points there. The, the the full ecosystem of this, it's you know, um, it's it's not just a CRM, it, and it hasn't been for quite some time uh, it, with the amount of functionality it has. I mean, I we've got customers and clients that are doing full front office transformations, everything sitting out there. Some run their service organizations, their call centers, um, incredible environment, like you said. And I think having the tools and understanding of how and what you need to look at and how to look at that is, is critical. And that turns tables right to you, Tim, <laughs> on, on uh, maybe talks about App Omni and how you know, maybe broadly they cover SaaS applications too. I mean, that's sort really of what we're referring to, but I know uh, your, your company has a, a pretty steep background in Salesforce as well. But maybe talk a little about that, the governance and, and kind of direction of App Omni and how that enables that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what uh, Andrea said is really important, which is Salesforce and, and really all of the, the large, you know, first tier enterprise SaaS platforms, they have a lot of tools on platform that you can make yeah. use of. But 
they're just the building blocks of a security program. You need to know how to configure those. And most, most importantly, you need to be able to continuously monitor that the configurations you've put in place using those tools, using those elements on the platform that can allow you to build a good security posture, uh, you need to make sure that you can monitor those are in place and remain in place. Some of our, our largest partners, um, and including ones that we've worked on with PwC, we are tracking tens and hundreds of thousands of potentially security relevant configuration changes in their Salesforce environments over the course of a single quarter. And so if you rely on some sort of point in time assessment or pre-commissioning security review for a Salesforce instance, you know that security review is out of date basically as soon as the ink dries on it. Um, you, what you really need is, is some platform in place that your security team can use to ensure constant visibility, constant governance, and constant monitoring of both the posture and the ongoing active threat environment that those, those SaaS environments exist in. You know, you, you hit on a, a key part that I, I see at my clients, um, and it's that a lot of these SaaS applications have tools. Andrea mentioned a couple of the good ones that, that are designed within Salesforce. But they typically are within that, and they're typically user focused, not necessarily environmental focused. I guess with App Omni, mm -hmm. is that ability to have one tool that could look across a set of threats across a full landscape, including that of Salesforce, because Andrea touched on it right when he kicked off. There's numerous clouds and, and environments and solutions that the company offers, right? So understanding all of those and being able to look across that or across the work days, the you know, the net suites and so forth of the world is critical and having one tool. They all can do it on their own to some extent, right? Right. Some, some not so much, but it's, it's having one holistic way to look at all that. And then kind of, I don't ever want to say, you just said it's not set it and forget it, mm -hmm. but it, it is, it's automated. I think it's also the consistency aspect. Most mature customers, certainly the ones that uh, Andrea is talking about that use uh, this myriad Salesforce features, essentially using Salesforce as a cloud-based operating system to run their business, they're not just running one Salesforce instance. They're running tens or hundreds of them. And all of the building blocks and tools that uh, Andrea talked about that live on platform are focused at a single instance of Salesforce. And so if you want to ensure consistency across your environments and universal adherence to your compliance and regulatory as well as security controls, you need a program and a piece of technology that can monitor all of those environments and run comparisons against them uh, on an hour by hour basis. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about program and the people side of it, which is critical um, because again, that concept of just having the tool, you need the program to have it to go mm -hmm. out there. So Andrea, let me turn back to you for a minute here. I know you've used these tools from a business process perspective. So we've talked a lot about the security side of that. But a lot of our, our clients set these tools up, like the sales forces of the world and so forth, to run their business, right? And so there's right. critical configurations in there, maybe from an audit compliance or another compliance perspective that they want to monitor. Can you talk a little about how you've helped do that? So from a business perspective, first of all, it is absolutely critical to understand the, the use case and how the solution is implementing uh, to address that particular business need, right? So as we know, Salesforce is extremely uh, agile to some extent. As I mentioned earlier, can be used in uh, thousands of different uh, um, ways and to address thousands of different problems. And understanding the peculiarities of that problem or that particular process is absolutely absolutely key. Uh, it's, a, it's key because uh, uh, different uh, use cases and different processes present different risks that requires different kind of responses. By response can be, uh, I, I mean, a potential security configuration, as well as a specific uh, system configurations that force the behavior of the system or the execution of the process in one direction instead of the other. What we see sometimes is that there is a, a lack of uh, uh, customization to some extent uh, in, in fine tuning these tools that are, uh, that are available in Salesforce and in the market. And uh, some companies forget to perform a proper risk assessment to understand what is really risky for them from a business execution perspective and what is the best option from a system, system configuration or solution that uh, can be uh, implemented in their Salesforce environment to address their particular need. I know you're working on one project. We won't, we won't mention a client, obviously, that where this is getting rolled out to, I'd say, the general public. It's a, it's a, it's a Salesforce e-commerce site, runs a huge part of their business. So I'd imagine at a company like that, how they set things up is critical because you've got your average end user in there banging around on it, right? So, Correct. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about 
some of the risks you saw there in terms of like now we're rolling out like to a true public right on, on, on a platform where they're buying and selling things. What, what are the kind of things you saw out there? So if you just look at the e-commerce from a B2C perspective, and probably that's the, the project you're you are talking about, there are different con considerations. There are definitely uh, fraudulent activities that may happen or mistakes that can happen in, on, the, on the company side that eventually can lead or incentivize to some extent uh, a misbehavior from an end user perspective. For example, uh, the um, attention to the, uh, the controls around pricing of products is absolutely critical. Or Pricing in the in the broader term, right? And from in terms of standard price as well as promotion that you can apply, coupons yeah. that you can apply, etc. Of course, if you don't have the right controls and the right attention of these, you can apply a coupon infinite times to a particular product or you combine keep, multiple coupons. People are in the price. Exactly. Coupon, coupon, coupon. Yeah. To basically purchase or or get products, uh, uh, even valuable products for free uh, in an infinite time. There is also um, you know the fraudulent activity on the company side that sometimes we tend to ignore, but uh, you know there is proper segregation of duties that need to be implemented on the company side because we know that if you, if you uh, give the key, uh, a key of the kingdom to one single person, it's very easy that that person will start uh, getting some valuable products and uh, try to play with the configuration in the system to put that on the, or the evidence under the rug. Mm -hmm. I've seen scenarios in, in uh, uh, some uh, organizations where even the, the fraud check for the payment uh, system was disabled a few seconds before the, a particular transaction was, was executed. So all these kind of things can happen, but of course uh, there are these risks that we uh, identify as part of our engagements and, uh, and controls and configuration that can be put in place. Configurations, controls that can be uh, you know, fully automated, uh, partially automated, or even, even manual, and even you know, uh, consideration at the governance level that need, uh, need, to, need to happen as well. And Tim, I know your background is doing that type of work, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, we've talked before, and that's, you, you were one of the folks in the SaaS team working for a SaaS provider building security, and you, you, you left that to go work on App Omni to make yeah. your old job easier. What are some of the things, let's say you go back, and we want you at App Omni, but if you go back there, what are some of the things you would use? How, how would you leverage a tool like App Omni? Sure. So I think one of the things that's most powerful about the technology that we try and build uh, is that we want to make it flexible to support the use case that Andrea just described, as well as you know the, the standard CRM use case and use cases that we haven't even imagined yet. And that's where you have to build security technology that is not just a set of 50 stock recommendations that it always must be this way. Because Salesforce, uh, Workday, ServiceNow, these, these enterprise SaaS applications can be configured to do almost anything. Uh, I certainly am not going to be able to predict what a given customer is going to build on top of those platforms. And so we have to go back to kind of a first principles approach from a security point of view and look at what are the controls that exist on the platform. And more importantly, what are the, the threat vectors that end users might try and use in the platform to attack it? And then give the ability for the customers of these SaaS platforms that are working with App Omni uh, to write security policies that make sense for their organization. And I think this is where we've worked really well together is delivering technology that then the, uh, the Salesforce practice experts that are working with a client on the PwC side can use to write very complex, very detailed security and governance policies that are going to be run on a continuous basis against the platform, knowing that they can use that for basically any use case. It doesn't require you to be using one of 10 standard Salesforce use cases. It can support any use case, even ones that uh, none of us have thought of yet. If I were to go back to a SaaS vendor at this point, what I'm looking at now is how can I empower our partners in the marketplace that build SaaS security management products to get information out in a standardized way, an efficient way uh, through supported APIs so that they can do that work. I don't think that SaaS security management should fall on the SaaS providers, just like cloud security posture management doesn't really fall on AWS or Azure or GCP. Right. That's something that a, a dedicated security solution can provide and should provide. Yeah, I think I think you, you guys have hit on a couple of key things, especially that the 
shared responsibility that you know all the SaaS providers talk about. There's those layers of trust, especially mm -hmm. within the sales force, right? They, you know, that the, how they do it. But there's always that aspect that, that does fall back on the customer or client, but something that can make that easier yeah. and automated because they, let's face it, they have Salesforce, but they probably have a lot of other things too. I have a client that has about 350 SaaS applications mm -hmm. working with you guys on that now <laughs> to try to try to try to you know program make a program out of keeping those secure. Andrea, what I'd like you to do is kind of put your magic hat on, look out there in your crystal ball, and tell me, what do you see coming in the future? So, it's not the future, but it's the present, Bob. A few weeks ago, Salesforce announced their uh, AI cloud, and they put a lot of emphasis in uh, the trust layer. Uh, as we know, um, trust is the number one value for Salesforce, and I think that with generative AI, trust will continue to be their number one value for a while. If we think about the trust layer, and you know, in, in the context of what we uh, we offer uh, upon me as a product, and and we as a as a services company, of course, there is a lot of things that, that need to happen, right? So to really empower and and implement the trust layer, security is the foundation. So securing the data that feeds the uh, generative AI engine is absolutely critical. But it's also critical to make sure that the whole governance to get the answers from generative AI and reduce and remove the toxicity that may come through that, you know, it will be um, m even more relevant in the future. So uh, I don't think it's the future, but I think it's the present. Salesforce recently announced the AI cloud, right, uh, as a new product, and they're definitely one of the first adopters of generative AI in their platform. They put a lot of emphasis in the trust layer, and I think it's absolutely critical for the uh, entire ecosystem, and also for Salesforce itself, since trust has been always their number one value, and I think that with generative AI, they will continue to be their uh, number one value. As we know, responsible AI is critical and is part of what we uh, do as PwC as well. Um, and if you think collectively on what we offer from a product and services perspective, there are a lot of things that need to happen to really enforce that uh, uh, and implement their trust layer. Everything starts securing the data that feeds the, the generative AI, but then all the steps that need to happen in between need to uh, require a strong governance and strong controls, right? To really implement that responsible AI I mentioned. If you just think, you know, even the outcome or the results that come from this generative AI requires some filtering and elimination of toxicity. Identifying the toxicity is something that needs to be properly controlled and, and governed as a whole. So uh, again, I think that there are a lot of, uh, this one is a brand new space for everybody. We are just at the beginning, but I think it's gonna be extremely critical for us and all our clients. Well, I couldn't agree more. And there's a lot of business and technology leaders out there talking about the same topic. Tim, I think we have our next project cut out for us to figure out this AI without Omni. I think almost certainly we're going to, as a group, be continuing to talk more and more about AI. And I agree entirely with what you said. I think it dovetails very nicely with what we were talking about earlier with regards to governance of existing platform capabilities. AI is, is going to be the future. And there's going to be a lot of conversations about how do we use AI? What application should we use AI for? Is AI the right solution? That's going to take years for the industry to start to align on. But the technology exists now. And so when you think about it from a security point of view, we really need to understand which parts of our business and which parts of data in our SaaS ecosystems are going to AI providers. And you know, perhaps we can feel more secure about Salesforce data going through the Salesforce AI products. We still want controls around that. Um, but more than that, I, I, as a security practitioner, would be much more concerned about this is a new fad, are my employees, are my end users connecting my SaaS applications like my Salesforce instances to non-Salesforce AI providers? You know, if there's a chat GPT Salesforce plugin, are they authorizing that through an OAuth connection without a vendor security review, without proper governance and having data extracted through the approved published Salesforce APIs because I didn't have proper governance over third-party connections to my SaaS estate. Having a constant eye towards what the future is for the technology space, especially as it intersects with SaaS and intersects with people getting their job done, will help us identify where we should put extra emphasis from a security point of view. Because at the end of the day, the security organization exists to enable the business to do business securely. Almost everyone at every large organization is thinking about how they can use AI to do their job better. So we're not going to be successful as security practitioners if we just ban AI. And so you can't connect any AI plugins, you can't connect any AI tools to my Salesforce, to my ServiceNow, all my SaaS applications. 
So with that in mind, it, it's going to go back to governance. And, and can we have a policy that allows the business to get their work done while also helping us understand where is my data actually going and which of these AI solutions now has access to my most sensitive company data as a training set? I really do appreciate it. The good news is we've got folks like you and the teams behind each of you uh, working and thinking through this stuff and looking ahead at how to protect that, how to continue to build the trust. So I did want to thank you both for coming very much. I appreciate the time and look forward to more talks. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Bob.